All right, guys, I want to share out of 2 Timothy chapter 3 today. I want to begin there anyway. I uh, want to start with something that I found to be interesting. And it's, you know, obviously it's not the first time uh, uh, that this has happened. It actually happens about two, three, four times a year. I uh, got a particular individual who uh, approached me in the comment section uh, claiming that they felt like I was, uh, you know, uh, focusing on them or, or what's the word I'm looking for, uh, calling them out on my live stream that I was talking about them on a particular issue, uh, something about how this individual had, from what I'm understanding anyway, I don't want to put words in the person's mouth that they had got into a inappropriate relationship with the teacher here on YouTube, so forth and so on. So she was listening to my live stream and she took it as if I was speaking of her. Now, I never have ran across this person, uh, didn't know who the person is and don't know who the person is. OK, so I find it kind of odd that people will come uh, to the channel from time to time and not even knowing that you're quoting straight out of the scripture, because I'm going to take you to exactly where uh, I, I was. You know, this is a passage. It seems like it really offends a lot of people when uh, I bring it up. But then it seems like people won't go to the passage and read it for themselves. OK, and that's that's the part that's lacking today in the body of Christ, people actually picking up the scripture and reading it for themselves. They want to get offended by the things you're saying. Oh, you need to dial back what you're saying. You shouldn't use the word dumb. You shouldn't use the word stupid. Well, you know, we can like clean this up and make it acceptable and comfortable for the people who are on their way to the lake of fire. But that's not what I want to do. And that's not what Jesus did. That's not what the disciples did. Peter went as far as to say that these false teachers were born to be killed, born to be destroyed. Now, that didn't sound very nice. OK, so we got to stop trying to focus on uh, being nice uh, and and making it comfortable for people who are on the way to the lake of fire versus look, saying it like it is and speaking the truth uh, to wake people up in love in Christ. OK, so let's take you to i find it fascinating it happens about two three four times a year somebody will come to me claiming that i am uh picking on them or calling them out when i don't even know who the people even are this woman who came to me just yesterday i, I was clueless to who she was and i had to tell her look i don't even know who you are i've never been to your channel as a matter of fact i've never even seen you comment on this channel so it kind of even makes me wonder, did someone, did someone whisper in her ear and send her over to this channel? Hey, I think Marcus is talking about you. So, is you know, we need to grow up, right? Anyway, enough of that. I'm going to take you to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to pick up here in verse 1. Reading this out of the Amplified Version. But understand this. That in the last days, dangerous time of great stress and trouble will come. Difficult days that will be hard to bear. Okay, are, are, are we seeing that? Are we seeing this today? For people will be lovers of self. Narcissistic. Self-focused. Now, this is one of the things that Jesus said that you will know them by their fruit. This is in Matthew chapter seven. Uh, uh, you will the speaking of the wolves who are dressed as sheep, they're dressed as harmless, innocent, gentle sheep. Jesus said by their fruit, you will recognize them. This also out of the Amplified Version. That is by their contrived doctrine and self-focus. So these are teachers who focus on self, self. They always make it about them, their charisma, their miracle work, working, their prophetic word, their dream, their vision. It's the, the, the whole ministry is all about them. It's focused on them. 
and and followers who are infatuated with them. This is how, and, and again, this is what Jesus said, you will know them by their fruit. This is how we recognize the false teachers from the true. Let's continue on. Boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, profane, and they will be unloving, devoid of natural human affection, calloused, and inhumane, irreconcilable. See, it's hard to reconcile with a person who walks in pride. It's hard to reconcile with a narcissist, a person who never sees their own wrong. But see, a narcissist always see the wrong in other people. And they are will, unwilling to forgive, even when they're the ones who started the trouble to begin with. Okay, so irreconcilable, malicious gossip. Gossips, devoid of self-control. Here it is, devoid of self-control. This is why these people, they, 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 they share dream after dream, vision after vision, rapture date after rapture date, because they have no self-control. They follow their false teachers, their false prophets, because they have no self-control. They walk in spiritual adultery and fornication. They, they walk in spiritual and, and uh, for, fornication and adultery, and they also walk in that in the flesh. Those who walk in spiritual fornication will live a life in the flesh in fornication as well, because, again, they have no self-control. Does that make sense? Immoral, brutal, haters of good, traitors, reckless, conceited. Lovers of sensual pleasure rather than lovers of God. And here it, here it is again. This is why they will, they refuse to let go of their false teachers and false prophets. They refuse to let go of their dreams. They refuse to let go of their miracle workers. Their, 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 their teacher who they're infatuated with. Three things that Jesus named in Matthew chapter seven. I'm not making this up. Many will come to me on that day saying, Lord, Lord, we cast out demons, we prophesied, we did miracles. I've been saying this for the last month or so, but notice how Jesus did not name those who called out false teachers in his name. Notice Jesus didn't say anything about that. But he did name out the, those who were bragging about their prophetic words, bragging about their miracles, bragging about casting out demons. Okay? Holding, there, verse five, here we go. Holding to a form of outward godliness and religion, although they have denied its power. Or we can say it like this. They deny the Holy Spirit. We receive the power by the Holy Spirit. So they want to profess Jesus while at the same time, in the same breath, they deny being Holy Spirit led. They call the leading of the Holy Spirit in their life they call that works of law. And it just shows you how ignorant and stupefied that, that these people are to say that. To even imply that the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ goes against the very work of the cross when the Holy Spirit himself was the one who raised Jesus from the dead. You can't make this up. You can't get any dumber than this. But this is what we're witnessing today. Let me continue on here. Although they have denied its power for their conduct nullifies. Notice this right here. For their conduct nullifies their claim of faith. See, this is what James was saying. Faith, was, faith without works is dead. Paul saying the same thing here. Avoid such people and keep far away from them. For among them, here it is, and uh, this drum roll. Okay, so now we're going to get to the verse where this woman, she was saying that I was calling her out. I was talking about her, but she did not realize that I was actually quoting scripture because we live in a generation and time where people today do not read the word. They jump on social media, they jump on their computer, they jump on their smartphone, and they run after teacher. One teacher after another chosen to satisfy their own liking, as Paul spoke of in the very next chapter here, 2 Timothy chapter 4. 
This is what we're seeing today. We have a we have an entire generation of individuals who, instead of seeking the word, Jesus is the word, by the way, John 1, 14, Jesus is the word made flesh. Instead of seeking the word, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's Romans 10, 17. Instead of seeking the word, I'm going to seek my quote unquote prophet, quote unquote miracle worker, quote unquote teacher who casts demons out. This is pathetic. This is spiritual adultery and fornication. It is the same very thing that plagued the house of Israel and is plaguing the church today. Verse six, for among them, drum roll, are those who worm their way into homes and captivate morally weak and spiritually dwarfed women weighed down by the burden of their sins, easily swayed by various impulses. Let me stop right there. Or we can say it like this. These are women that, and, and we see them all across social media, they can't keep their mouth shut. They can't stay off the keyboard. And it's the same very women who can't keep their mouths shut or the same ones who can't keep their legs shut. Can I just say it like that? Can we just speak the truth today? The same very ones who are supporting false teachers and false prophets, the same ones who are in spiritual fornication and adultery are the same ones that are in adultery and fornication in the flesh, in the natural. See, we were warned of this in scripture, but the, the funny thing about this is, so we have men who are deceivers, who care nothing, see, they're, they're focused on self, 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 and then they draw in and attract these kind of women who sit up at home. Their, their, their man is weak and not walking in Christ. And then they choose because you don't have to, even if your husband is not walking in Christ, you don't have to be weak. You can choose to get into the word of God and seek Jesus. And thank God for the few, who, the, the few women who are doing that. The road is few. The road is narrow for men and women. The road is narrow and few are choosing to seek Jesus. And this is very sad to see. But let me continue. On. But you want to call Marcus a hater? No, I'm reading this straight out of the scripture, but you refuse to open the scripture for yourself. OK, so don't come to me talking about, oh, Marcus, I, I was watching your live stream and, and blah, blah, blah. Well, you claim that you then heard my testimony about my marriage. So that would tell me you've been watching the channel for quite some time, unless someone sent you over here and gave you just a little bit of information that I went through some marriage trials way yonder. Okay, I'm not ashamed of the testimony that the Lord God Almighty has given my wife and I. Because it was by the power of the Holy Spirit and is by the power of the Holy Spirit that he has set us free. So no one in there, look, no one is going to shame us. I just, I just hope you know that. You can try, give it your best shot. But it, it ain't going to mean jack to me. What God did in our life is amazing. And I'm still thankful. I'm thankful each day of my life for this. Verse seven, let's continue on here. Speaking of these women now. Always learning. Marcus didn't write this. This is this is the word of God. You can pick it up. You can pick up the scripture right now, or you can just get butt hurt and offend it. Or you can learn. We, we have a lack, we, we have a generation of unlearned individuals, unlearned people who 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 would rather be dumb and stupid and and so uh, socially popular than to be favored by God. This is just a shame. Always learning and listening to, speaking of these women here, always learning and listening to anyone, anybody who will teach them. But listen to this. But never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Just as Janaeus and Jambreus, the court ma magicians of Egypt, who opposed Moses. So these were the two clowns where Moses, when he threw down the staff, then they came and they threw down the staff and had their, their snake. And then, but the, the, the snake of Moses uh, devoured those. See, see what, what Paul is saying here is 
Janaeus and Jambreus, they walked in signs and they had that signs who followed them. And but yet they opposed the truth. But people thought that they were so cool and amazing because they had they quote unquote had signs. They were gifted. And this is the same thing we see today. So many pe people are getting infatuated by titles, by demons being cast out, by miracles, by prophetic words. But yet they're not leading folks to the truth. These people are not hungry for God's word. They're hungry for their teacher on Facebook or YouTube. Okay. And that's exactly what is being said right here. You can hate Marcus all you want. It ain't going to change. It ain't going to change the truth of the living word of God. But never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, just as Janaeus and Jambreus, the court magicians of Egypt who opposed Moses. So these men also oppose the truth. Men of depraved mind, unqualified and worthless as teachers in regard to the faith. Let me repeat that one more time. Men of deprived mind, unqualified and worthless as teachers, worthless as teachers, worthless as teachers, worthless as teachers in regard to the faith. But they will not get very far for their meaningless nonsense. Well, Paul, you don't sound very nice in saying that. And ignorance will become obvious to everyone as that of Janaeus and Jambreus. Uh. Verse 13, let me just jump down here. But evil men and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Let me take you to 2 Thessalonians real quick. I just want to read the verse 3 here. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no one in any way deceive, and let me highlight this word here, deceive or entrap you for that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first that is the great rebellion the abandonment of the faith by professed christians the abandonment of the faith by professed christians but let's go back to the to, to a word here i want to say so let no one deceive or Entrap you. Now I'm highlighting the word entrap. This is interesting because <clears throat> get this out of the way here. I'm highlight, highlighting the word entrap, and I just want to give the definition of entrap. To catch in or as if in a trap. But here's even more interesting here. To lure into a compromising statement or act. Now I'm bringing this up because I've had Several individuals here in the recent months, in the last year, tried to entrap me. One claiming that they wanted to give a gift to the ministry and they've watched me for so long. Yeah, you're full of crap because if you watch me, you know I don't take uh, donations. But they were hoping to, to catch, they were, they were trying to entrap me. Another one tried to uh, basically catch me in an inappropriate situation, trying to thinking that I was going to say something inappropriate, and I didn't. See, there are people who are trying to lure you into certain situations, compromising situations, so they can go out and then go out and put you on blast. This is what folks try to do. Well, we don't have anything on them yet, so let's make something up. Let's try to catch them in something, and then we can just shut them down and destroy them, kind of like uh, Delilah did to Samson. See, this Jezebel spirit that's out and working today in the church is no joke. People think they're so clever. I'm going to take you. I just, I just want to say this right now. I thank God for my wife. Because me and my wife, we share 
our show, social media accounts. We share our phone accounts. We have each other's uh, passwords to our phones. And, and we don't have that because of lack of trust. No, we have that because of trust. And to guard one another from this garbage. Okay, so there are people around here. They think, and see, your marriage may be different. And maybe you think you can come here while, you, while you've usurped authority in your marriage, while you can't even stay faithful to your own spouse, but then you want to come here and try to put me on blast. You want to come here while you can't even be faithful to your own, your own husband or wife, but then you want to try to rebuke me. No, you're in a place where you need to go learn in silence and keep your mouth shut. When Lewis and, 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 and Carol, uh, the, the teachers in that uh, marriage mentor class, mentorship class that Esther and I went to for many, many years, when they taught, we didn't try to school them because they had been through stuff. They had been through years of things, many more years of marriage than us. So we didn't try to go school them because that would have been foolish. But ladies and gentlemen, we live in a foolish generation who unlearned individuals are now, they have a platform because of social media and they think they know it all because of a YouTube channel. Disgraceful. Isaiah chapter five, and I'll begin to end the message with this, but I want you to hear this. Woe, judgment is coming to those who drag along wick wickedness with cords of falsehood. And I'll say this, it's a wicked thing to try to, to try to entrap someone. It's a wicked thing to do it. And this is why we're living in a time where you better be on guard. And I say this to, to men and women who are in the faith and not, and, and, and not in the faith, in ministry and not in ministry is what I'm trying to say. You better be on guard because there are going to be people who are going to try to take you down. Understand that. And sin as if it was a cart of ropes towing their own punishment who say, let him move speedily. Let him expedite his work, his promised vengeance, so that we may see it. And let the purpose of the Holy One of Israel approach and come past so we may know it. Verse 20. Woe, judgment is coming to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness. So we got a lot of e evil people here who call themselves Christians, and they have a problem telling the truth. They're manipulators. They're liars. They think they're clever. See, wolves do the same. I mean, real-life wolves, not wolves dressed as sheep, but real-life wolves, those two, by the way, but real-life wolves, they say they're one of the most clever animals. And see, that's not... That's not an attribute I would want to have. I'm clever to the point of deceptive. No, I don't want no, I want to be honest. But we got people, this is what they do. They manipulate, they lie, and then they get caught in a lie and they still won't repent. This is how disgraceful the time that we're living in has gotten. Who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. In other words, you're going to act like you all sweet and charming and holy, but in, in actuality, you you about as bitter as bitter can get. Evil as evil can get. Judgment is coming to you. Do you understand that? Just like in the day of Sodom and Gomorrah, just like in the day of, of, of Noah, they laughed when the warning was being given. And, and just right now, you are laughing at this. You're like, oh, well, God, no, no God, God's slow. Judgment's not coming. I'm going to continue to be a dishonest, professing, lifelong Christian and do what I want to do. Too prideful to repent. Whoa, judgment is coming to those who, listen to this, who are wise in their own eyes and clever and shrewd in their own sight. This is what I'm talking about. These are the manipulators. They think they know everything. Whoa, judgment is coming to those who are Heroes at drinking wine and men of strength mixing intoxicating drinks. Who justify the wicked and acquit the guilty for a bribe and take away the rights of those 
who are in the right. Do we not see this today? Are we not witnessing this on social media where folks are defending those who are in error, falsely prophesying, falsely teaching, and folks defend them? They rejoice in error. They rejoice in wickedness while they call themselves Christian. Verse 24, and we will begin to end the message with this. Therefore, as the tongue of fire consumes the stubble from straw and the dry grass collapses into flame, into the flame, so their root will become like rot and their blossom blow away like fine dust. This is like the wheat and, and, and the tares here, how, the, how the, the tares will be blown away like shaft. Because they have, listen to this, I want you, and as I end the message, I want you to, if there's anything I want you to hear, listen to this. Why? Because they have rejected the law of the Lord of hosts and despised and discarded the word, the word of the Holy One of Israel. They have despised and discarded the word of the Holy One of Israel. I don't want to hear God's word. Give me a dream. Give me a vision. Give me a rapture day. Give me an A. Give me a B. Give me a C. Give me my teacher. He's a miracle worker. He casts demons in. And he prophesies and she prophesies. She's a prophetess and blah, blah, blah. But I don't care about God's word because my favorite teacher trumps God's word. They're bigger than God's word and I'll do anything for them. I'll even give them sexual favors because I'm walking in spiritual fornication and adultery and find myself compromising the faith because I don't love the word of God, Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we're witnessing today. And folks, you know, many folks, when they hear a message like this, they want to get mad. But, you know, when you're reading it straight out of the word, I'm not sure what it exactly is that you're getting mad about. We shouldn't get mad. Do I get challenged when I read God's word? Oh, yeah, I do. The word of God challenges me and it should challenge us all. But when we go substitute teachers so we don't have to deal, so we, we don't have to uh uh, be accountable to God's word. Let me take you just to one more passage here. Second Timothy four. Oh, whoops. Let's do this. Second Timothy chapter four. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction that challenges them. With God's truth. I don't want to be challenged. This is basically what Paul's saying. People who don't want to be challenged by the sound doctrine, but instead, they want to have their ears tickled with something pleasing. Oh, miracle workers, give me a give me a smoothie. Give me a smoothie. Give me a rapture smoothie. Give me a Trump's returning to the White House smoothie. And they will accumulate for themselves many teachers. One after another chosen to satisfy the desires of the Holy Spirit. Oh, no. No, their own desires and to support the heirs they hold. Verse 4, and they will turn away their ears from the truth and they will wander off into myths and man-made fictions. And listen to this, ladies and, gen ladies and gentlemen, excuse me. They will accept the unacceptable. They will accept the unacceptable. I'm going to accept my false prophet, my false teacher, my, my teacher who's cheated on all of his wives, who's been married multiple. Like I'm going to accept it as truth because I've tossed away and thrown away the true living word of God in substitute for my favorite teacher. Ladies and gentlemen, today is the day to repent and turn away from this evil. The Lord God Almighty is waiting with open arms for us to return to him.
Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of restoration in Christ.